Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori or Victoria if you're new here. If you're not new here, welcome back. I don't typically wear bows, um, but my hair was super greasy, so we're just working with it. Anyway, today I wanted to talk about something that I get asked a lot, both on YouTube and in my personal life, and that is how I can afford to travel so much. So if you do follow my channel and my videos, you know that I spent about nine months this year out of the country. So I left in January and I came back in September. Um, and as a 22 year old uh, who just graduated, it's a valid question. How did I afford to do this? Um, so I'm gonna be breaking that down for you in this video, um, but I just wanna clarify now that this was my experience, this is what I did. I'm not saying this is the only way to do this. I'm not saying that you should do this or that everybody can do these things. This is just how I did it. So hopefully some of these things can help you or apply to your situation. If they can't, I'm sorry, I'm sure there's things that you can do that I can't do. So let's get started. Actually, before I get started, if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and blah, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. But you can wait till the end if you want to, but this might be a long video, so just do it now. Anyway, so first things first, um, I'm gonna start off with probably the most basic one that I know most people don't want to hear because it's kind of obvious um, and it's also hard, and that is to save. Um, I was able to save because I started working when I was 15 and during that time, I was living at home and I was just saving all the money that I was making. Really limited and controlled the amount that I spent on going out with friends for movies and food and all that kind of thing. So if you're not in a situation where you can live for free because you're older or you don't live at home, um, there's still ways to save. It's a little bit harder and I know the situation is going to vary for all people. I would just sit down and look at all your expenses from your rent to your utilities to how much you spend on groceries, how much you eat out, your car expenses, everything. Really look at it all and sort of categorize things into necessities and things that just make your life more fun or more interesting. And sometimes you kind of have to cut in both places, but more so in the um, recreational expenses. So if you see that you're spending a lot in eating out, try to eat at home more. Um, I know it can be hard if you have a really busy schedule and you think it's faster to eat out, but I was sort of able to work around this through meal prepping um, a couple days a week. I set aside a couple hours and I just cook for the whole week. And in the long run, this saves a lot of time, a lot of money, um, and it's healthier too. Um, so moving along to the next category, because again, I think saving is gonna be such a personalized one that I can't go into a whole lot of detail. Um, oh, another thing that I wanted to add, I went to community college for two years, so I continued to live at home while working full-time and saving all that money. So I had a lot of savings. All right, moving along to the next thing, and I have my little list here, so I'm just gonna be reading from it. Um, the next thing, and this is huge, and this is something that anybody can do if you are planning a long-term traveling trip, uh, stay in each region a lot longer. Um, it can be really tempting to want to go to Paris and London and Barcelona, all these big cities in different countries, but realistically to get from country to country or from city to city really adds up. So if you stay in one location for a longer amount of time, you're going to be saving a lot in transportation fees, in train rides, in bus rides, in flights. All of those things add up a lot. This also saves a lot of money for Airbnbs or hostels or however you're doing it, um, especially Airbnbs because usually there's a cleaning fee and a book, a service fee and all those kinds of fees. And if you're staying in one place for a longer amount of time, you don't have to pay all of those new cleaning fees and service fees. Um, and a lot of times they even have discounts. If you're staying somewhere over a week, usually there's some kind of discount and, and it can be as significant as like 30 to 40% off, which makes a huge difference. So yes, thing number two, stay local, stay regional. Um, that's not to say you can't go somewhere completely different after that, but while you're in Amsterdam, see the rest of the local Netherlands before you decide to go to Portugal. So the third thing, um, and this is sort of specific to my situation, but I think there's ways around it, even if you're not in my specific situation, but I spent my first four and a half months that I was abroad um, studying abroad. So I was in my last semester of college and I decided to go to Maastricht in the Netherlands 
and I got so much financial aid and scholarship money that it basically allowed me to spend those first four and a half months living, I think I spent around $1,000 out of pocket because the rest was covered by um, my financial aid and scholarships. So if you are a student, study abroad. I highly recommend it. It was some of the most amazing memories and experiences of my life. Um, I met amazing people. I got to do amazing things. We were traveling every weekend. Um, and yeah, I just really, really thankful I did that. I also can't talk, so excuse my mumbling today. Um, if you're not a student, this is still possible through things like WorkAway. Um, WorkAway is something that I really strongly considered after I finished studying. Um, and it's basically a website and it connects you to different hosts and so it's a work exchange. You work around 15 hours a week and exchange you get free sort of accommodation and sometimes this also includes free meals. So I highly recommend looking into that if you are looking to stay somewhere for a longer amount of time because that could pay for all of your living expenses, um, which is pretty good. <laughs> Next thing is to pick places where you know people. And again, maybe this doesn't apply to you. Maybe you don't know anybody in another country. Maybe you know someone in your country who's in a different spot where you can go visit. But picking a location where you know people, whether it's to stay with them or just to kind of have their help around the town um, is huge. I have a lot of family in Spain. I was born in Spain. And so I spent about a month and a half in Spain just staying with family members and friends. Um, a lot of times they're cooking for you. You have a free place to do your laundry, all that kind of stuff makes life so much easier. Even if it's just an acquaintance in a city, maybe they're gonna offer to give you a ride somewhere or to help you out with some sort of sightseeing. All those things add up and can really save you a lot of money. So sort of think about that when you're picking where you wanna go is do you maybe have some contacts in some area that you could explore and utilize um, to just make things a little easier for yourself. <sighs> I'm also getting hot and my mouth's getting dry. I haven't filmed a sit down video in a long time. I haven't filmed a video in a long time and I apologize and we have a lot more coming. So the next thing is to travel with other people. Um, when I was sort of first planning my travels, I didn't really consider the difference in cost of solo travel versus traveling with a small group. But if you do wanna stay in like Airbnbs or renting places, this cuts the cost so much. You can always get by alone in hostels, but honestly, there came a certain point where I was so over hostels, and maybe you've reached that point too. And I just didn't want to smell feet and have men or people who make me uncomfortable in the same space that I'm sleeping and changing in. Anyway, traveling with people can really cut the cost. If you're one person getting a, even if it's just one bed, if two people can fit in that bed, that's half the cost. So. Traveling with others this can also cut costs in transportation if you're renting a car. Sometimes there's even transportation discounts for groups. Um, so travel with others. It also cuts costs in food. If you're doing a lot of cooking for yourselves or even sharing at restaurants, um, you can save a lot of money because groceries for one person versus groceries shared, a lot less waste and a lot more money saved. Um, the next thing is a little bit more, well, I would think it's obvious, but maybe it's not but the style to which you are traveling. I traveled nine months traveling. I did not vacation for nine months. So be ready to give up some of the little luxuries. Um, be ready to sort of compromise a little bit in how nice the places you're staying in or how fancy the restaurants are. Um, travel on a budget. Pick places that are lower cost. Don't eat in city centers. Usually the more touristy parts of town are the most expensive and you can find delicious and usually more authentic food if you go outside a little bit. Um, this was huge when we were in Budapest and basically everywhere in Portugal. Um, in the main city center where all the tourists are, prices were super high. The food wasn't as good. It was not as authentic. Um, and if we walked like 15 minutes outside of these areas, we could find full meals that were super filling and delicious for under four euros. So definitely recommend sort of being, being wise about how you're traveling. Another thing in this category is eating and drinking. I think I mentioned this earlier, eat at home, try to book places that have kitchens or at least spaces where you can cook. Um, drinking too can add up. Usually the liquor stores or markets stop selling alcohol after a certain point at night. So make sure that you get your beers during the day so that you can take them out with you at night. A lot of places it's legal to drink in the streets and that's where the party is anyway. So if you've already bought your alcohol from the market or liquor store, it's a lot cheaper than getting all your drinks at the bars later when you go out. And you can still get a drink at a bar, but you know, you're not buying five drinks at the bar. 
<clears throat> so the next thing is, what is the next thing? Plan ahead. This makes a big difference in terms of accommodations. You are going to find the best deals on Airbnbs if you're looking in ahead, if you're looking in advance, than if you're looking two days before you arrive to a city. And this is particularly true in bigger cities, Paris, Barcelona. You are not gonna find the cute Airbnb in the best part of town for the best price two days before arriving to the city. So really plan ahead, pick your places. I really spent a lot of time in planning. So I planned my route based on what countries were the cheapest to fly to and from, if that makes sense. So if I knew I wanted to do Italy, Portugal, and Greece, I looked up every city in those countries and I found the best, um, and I found the best sequence to fly in so that I was finding the cheapest flights to each country. I really hope that makes sense. Uh, use things like Skyscanner or Google Flights that have flexible search options where you can see all airlines and be flexible on dates because that makes a huge difference. Also, the day that you are purchasing your flight is super important. So prices typically dropped between Monday and Wednesday with Tuesday being like the best day to buy a ticket. Um, not to fly, like not to buy a ticket to fly on a Tuesday, but to actually just buy your ticket on a Tuesday or Wednesday was cheapest. Um, so yeah, use those search engines, know how to use them, um, and really just sort of have flexibility with your locations and your dates because that's how you're gonna find the best deals for flights. And trains are a little more standard. Um, so if you wanna wait in terms of booking trains and buses, you can just be mindful of things getting full or whatnot. Only two more left, we are getting towards the end, so just hang in there. But the next thing is try to work as you go. I wasn't super able to do this. I don't have a remote job, um, but if you can get one of those, that's great. Or maybe the work away thing, or if you get a visa to work somewhere. I know Australia is great for sort of working holidays, um, but getting a little bit of income while you're traveling is nice. I actually got a small amount of income through YouTube. I'm a very small channel, so this was a very small amount of money, but a little bit goes a long way when you're traveling. So this helps cover costs of food or just little things. Um, so just try to get income where you can. If you do have a job right now and they are willing to let you work at least part-time remotely, try. And last but last, last but not least, get a van. So, <laughs> so getting a van to either convert to a camper van or one that's already converted, that's a little bit more expensive, can save you a long time if you are really planning on living somewhere long-term. So if you wanna travel the US or just fully travel wherever it is you're going um, by land, so that's not like flying from city to city, but investing in getting a van and converting it to be able to cook in and sleep in can save so much because it is your transportation, it is your Airbnb, it is the roof over your head, and you have so much flexibility. Um, I did not do this while I was traveling, but I got home and with the rest of my savings, I just bought a van. So stay tuned for that because there will be a full build series that should be pretty entertaining because I have zero carpentry or electrician or auto or any kind of skills like that. So it's, it's definitely gonna be a learning experience. Um, but we're gonna do a full van build series. So if you wanna catch that adventure, be sure to subscribe. Um, so yeah, I hope these were helpful. I hope at least a few of them can apply to you and your situation. Um, if they can't, I'm really sorry for wasting however many minutes this was, but I told you at the beginning, everyone's situation is different. If you did enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe again. And thank you for watching.